But we're going to come back down to the ground right now, or at least here to the studios of KLRU-TV and Central Texas Gardener, where we're going to be talking more about green roofs. And we're joined by a couple of folks who have created a network that is studying and promoting the use of green roofs here in Central Texas. We have Lauren Woodward Stanley, who's an architect and has a green roof herself, and Casey Boyder, who we just met, the designer whose lovely roof we just visited. And uh, I'm sure that a lot has changed there. We'll be visiting about that in just a moment, Casey. But I want to start off by visiting with you, Lauren, and talking a little bit about uh, the, the network that you've created. It's called GROWERS, mm -hmm. which is an acronym for what? Green Roofs, Working Expertise in Regional Solutions. Okay. It's um, something that Casey and I and another woman, Dylan Siegler, um, came together in 2007 to, um, and by, um, via a, a mutual contact and a roof consultant who's sort of a guru, green roofs, and we all were interested in our own respective worlds in green roofs and mm -hmm. what the appropriate ones were, could be in Austin. Right. And so it's really informal and it's, um, it's just a, we have a website, um, austingrowers.com, and it's just about sharing information and knowledge um, and just being a network, posting projects that are happening in Austin. Well, I think it's a really exciting new way for people to garden. As, as, sp as space tightens up and uh, the world heats up, mm -hmm. these kinds of interventions really can make a big difference in the way we mm -hmm. live. Casey, uh, we saw your roof when it was relatively new. How, how does it look today? It looks pretty amazing. It's it's grown so fast. All the, the roses are in bloom. The sedge seed is coming to seed. Um, it, it, it's filled in, I'd say it's probably about 75% full mm -hmm. established at this point, yeah. And I still have not watered yet. Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's been a very good spring <laughs> so sure far. It sure has, we've been very lucky. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of spring and rain, um, I'm curious, what happens when we get one of those Central Texas downpours on a green roof? Um, it slow. it acts as a sponge. It slows the water down, which is all, all good. It's, mm -hmm. it's good for our fish and our waterways and our roads flooding. Right. Um, that's the sort of big benefit that's touted often is uh, mm -hmm. stormwater retention and detention, mm -hmm. slowing it down. So yeah. it's a sponge in a lot of ways. It's sponge for sort of, um, it acts as an insulator. It slows things down. It's just another dynamic layer. It's biologically very, very dynamic mm -hmm. that helps in a lot of different ways for um, buildings oh, and environment. It, well, I'm sure it helps insulate the buildings, but uh, that that whole notion of it being a sponge-like thing, uh, you know, I would be afraid of just watching the garden come off the roof, but that doesn't <laughs> mm. happen because of the, the roots of knitting everything together, right? right? right yeah, right. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's all just a happy, another, it's another sort of like biological layer. It's, it's a happy world with bugs and mm -hmm. soil mm -hmm. um, microbes and roots and plants, and it's... It doesn't wash away. <laughs> and and Casey, uh, uh, and looking at pictures of your, the roof in its current state, I see the, it, there are abundance of flowers, including, I can't believe it, roses growing on mm -hmm, a roof. Mm -hmm. I have a red cascade and a marjorie fair that are both cascading over the edges in full bloom right now. So Very that's exciting. terrific. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. imagine, if you will, just roses cascading off of your roof, which yeah. is really quite a treat. Mm -hmm. Open up the windows and, and take the fragrance in that way would mm -hmm. be quite oh, something definitely. to have, definitely. you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> now, your roofs are very different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Casey, your roof has a fairly deep roof, mm -hmm. uh, a soil level, I mean. Mm -hmm. And, um, and talk, talk a little bit about the soil mix. This is, I love soil recipe mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you use. Um, well, I would start by saying that my roof is actually what they call uh, more of an intensive roof. So like you said, it's deeper. Um, you can grow for woodier plants mm. on there. You can open up the palette a whole lot more when you get that deeper soil profile. It's about eight to 10 inches. I think, yeah, yeah eight to 10 inches mm -hmm. varying. Um, and the different elements in the soil are, you know, you think about organic and inorganic, that's mm -hmm. pretty much where you begin. Um, you wanna have uh, a really high content of inorganic materials such as, we, Lauren and I both use uh, lava rock. Um, mm -hmm. Lightweight, that Exactly, makes sense. that's what makes, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that makes lava rock, besides the fact that it's volcanic and all the different potential nutrients that you mm -hmm. can get from those materials, um, but lightweight. It holds just enough water, but also drains just enough water at the same mm -hmm. time. Um, it, it's actually a great stabilizer. I've found that the silt has, the, the smaller fines have, have, have kind of uh, moved kind through of the profile. Exactly. The, the cracks and everything. And that, and that lava rock actually provides a, a mulch 
right. now, so it kind of doubles as a mulch. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Yeah. And and you've used more of a, you have a thinner profile for your soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you, and using different kinds of plants, there are more grasses and yeah. things like that. There's definitely overlap. I think there's um, there's more commonality than they are than there are differences between our roofs. They're they're both mine is what you'd call fully extensive, so that's sort of defined as four to six inches of depth which is really demanding a lot for, especially this climate, for mm -hmm. something to function and perform well and not die, not get too mm -hmm. desiccated, too dried out. Um, but also lava rock, um, perlite, and decomposed granite sand, yeah. um, and a little some rice hulls, 10% rice hulls, mm -hmm. and just a little bit of cow manure, just a little bit of organic to kind of- Just a touch. Just a touch, a to little sprinkling. Mm -hmm. And Casey and I worked on this formula for my roof um, by, three different times doing a trial to see how the water would drain, what it would weigh, fully mm -hmm. saturated. Yeah. And the first time was a total failure. Mm -hmm. It was way too heavy, it wasn't draining. So it was something that we worked on knowing what we've both learned uh, respectively over time as to what it needs to do, what mm -hmm. a green roof soil mix needs to do. It's just not potting soil that you get at the I, nursery right. and throw yeah. up there. <laughs> right, so. right. Now, Casey, your roof is flat. Now, and mm -hmm. yours, actually, Lauren, is a little, got a little pitch to it, right? Yeah, it's a one to twelve. It slopes one inch per twelve inches, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a little bit. It's just a between Gentle. flat and a shed mm -hmm. roof. And one of the differences between our roofs is that she's got something called a parapet, which is our sort of mini walls that kind of our wall continuations of the main walls, exterior walls of the structure, and it's just all it's like a bathtub. The membrane wraps up, and it's just all filled in with soil. Mine, on, in, in contrast, is like a slab. And then we have a garden edging that's like a sort of a, um, a perforated, extruded aluminum mm -hmm. edging that's like an L. Yeah. And that holds the soil in. And I've got about this much depth, where she's got about double that. Yeah. So hers is going to hold a little bit more moisture, and mine is going to, um, if mine's got a sort of bigger challenge of um, that shows me that if it works, you really can ask these things to do um, quite a lot more than I think is, is thought is possible right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. in Austin well, mm -hmm. because it's really thin and it dries out faster. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the things that you're working on. I, I'm, I assume that you're doing some things collaboratively. It sounds like you, you, mm -hmm. you're trading a lot of notes here in terms of what you're learning about the different roofs. What kinds of projects are you working on? Um, uh, me individually, I have a... Uh, I, I design and build gardens on the ground as well as green roofs. So I have mostly actually residential projects. I have a, a small handful of residential green roofs that I'm in the process of designing and building right now. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, we have a project that we uh, started, I believe it was over the beginning of winter maybe, um, called Grow Austin. It's a part of Growers where um, we're actually building postage stamp green roofs um, all across Austin to you know, just further that knowledge and show those examples to people mm -hmm. out there. Um, mm -hmm. We just completed our first roof last month and it, it looks great, it's on a garden shed. It's about 250 square feet, mm -hmm. I believe, and there's a couple more in the running that, that, that should be coming to fruition Yeah, soon. and this Grow Austin, this sort of um, green roofs over Austin is a, a specific project that growers as a group set about to like, to really get on the ground and, and put up these small roofs over unconditioned space if there weren't any, you know, people kind of volunteer their mm -hmm. tool shed, their chicken coop, carport maybe, mm -hmm. um, because there's much less liability associated with that. And um, the point is to try this sort of soil mix with this plant palette here. Now we're gonna go over to North Austin with this person over here who's wants to throw in with their project and we're trying a different, maybe the same plant palette with a different soil mix. So we try all these different variables. for the whole community, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, exactly. and we've got, had so far the benefit of some donated materials, which is really fortunate. Mm -hmm. That's gonna run out, but we're sort of looking at different ways to go after some more, um, get some little perks so that people have a, you know, they're, they're more stimulated to wanna participate. Well, Lauren, I want to talk more about the benefits to the homeowners. You're an architect, mm -hmm. and, if you, and I know that when you, when you visit with your clients, you're talking with them about what you, the benefits of this might possibly be. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the benefits to the homeowners in terms of, I'm thinking about the cooling bills mm -hmm. and during the summertime. Does yeah. this really help? Um, green roofs appeal to people who are really interested in, like you said earlier, doing the right thing. Um, there are sort of what they call public benefits and private benefits, and the public ones I alluded to before with sure. the stormwater slowing and the urban heat island, and mm -hmm. which all ties into climate change and, and 
doing what you can on that front, um, having more green surface rather than hard gray surface. Um, the private benefits are um, for the uh, sort of augmented insulation to thermal insulation for the interior of the house, augmented sound insulation, um, wildlife. It can mm. be an amenity if you've Absolutely. designed the thing to be able to get up there and enjoy. I think most residential applications are that way. I don't think too many people want to do green roofs and they never go up there or see mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the others? It, it cools the ambient temperature so that yeah. your air conditioning bills are um, just, everything is kind of a little cooler. That, well, yeah. and we could all use a little bit of that. And, mm -hmm. and you can you know, you know can look <clears throat> during the summertime at, uh, on any weather forecast and see the heat island effect mm -hmm. in reality, mm -hmm. yeah. always impacting the center of the town more. Mm -hmm. So the more people who do this, the better, as far right, as I'm right, concerned. Exactly. Real briefly, how do people get in touch if they want to do so? Uh, GrowersAustin.com is a great place to begin. Okay. That's GrowersAustin.com, mm -hmm. and you can scroll across a, a button there that allows you to join the Yahoo group. Okay, um, great. Yeah. All yeah, right, well, we best. encourage people to do that, and we thank you both the, for the work that you're doing mm -hmm. and for being our guest today. This is really exciting to Thanks me, so thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for yes. being our guest Enjoyable. here. And coming up next is our friend, Daphne Richards.